Hi, I'm going to talk about Einstein's special theory of relativity and how it is derived. Specifically, this equation here, the so-called Lorentz factor, which is the absolute basis, the foundation of the special theory of relativity. Now, there are two ways in which this can be derived. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the ways using a so-called light clock. I called it Einstein's clock because it's usually attributed to Einstein, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to argue that this light clock doesn't work and it has to go, it has to be scrapped. The light clock is well known by this time. If we imagine a beam of light or a pulse of light bouncing up and down between two points, that's a clock, that's how it keeps time when it's stationary. Then we imagine the clock as it's moving. When it moves, the beam of light, instead of going vertically, it goes horizontally. And that is the basis of it. So if you're stationary relative to the clock, it goes vertically. If the clock's moving relative to you, you would see it moving diagonally, which means it has further to go at the same speed because light is always the same speed and so it goes slower. So we have a vertical beam of light when the object is stationary. We have the diagonal beam when it's moving relative to the observer, and we have the distance the object has moved in that time. The distance of the vertical beam is c times tau, that's the proper time. The distance of the diagonal beam is ct, and the distance is on the bottom is vt. We then apply Pythagoras to that, and we have ct squared equals vt squared plus c tau squared which we solve for t. So we have the formula which we solve for t. t is the relativistic time, tau is the proper time, and we get the answer t is tau divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. In other words, the relativistic time is the proper time multiplied by 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. The name given to this equation is the Greek letter gamma. Gamma is 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, the Lorentz factor, and this is the basis of the special theory of relativity. So what is wrong with the light clock then? Well, first of all, we start with Einstein's basic assumptions that um, the laws of physics are the same in all inertial frames and that the speed of light is constant. We'll accept them for the time being. But the main thing we're going to look at is this idea that, that the beam of light moves differently. It moves diagonally for the one observer. If the clock's not moving relative to you, it moves vertically. If it is moving relative to you, it moves diagonally. And that's where you, you get this so-called time dilation. It's that I want to challenge. That's the bit that just does not work. The most obvious thing I think that's wrong with it is that it doesn't move. It doesn't move diagonally. When we're stationary, the clock is vertical, the beam of light is vertical. When it's moving, it's still vertical, is what I want to say so you don't get a different time. One thing you can do is simply turn it on its side like that. It's now horizontal. So it goes back and forward like that. So it wouldn't have further to go. It just goes same distance at the same speed. Even if it's vertical, it still doesn't move in a different way. For example, 
you could imagine that being inside a container, which restricts its movement, so it has to go vertically. And it doesn't matter how fast that is moving, that's still going to go vertical, straight up and down. It's still going to go the same distance in the same time. And you can see this from the animation in the rocket. You can see that it still moves diagonally, so it still moves vertically, no matter how fast it's moving. As you can see, the beam of light is still moving from A to B, and it still moves vertically, even though the rocket is moving relative to us. It does not move diagonally at any point. So, you don't get this, you do not get this difference, you don't get the triangle, you don't get the algebra, and you do not get the Lorentz factor. In other words, you don't get this triangle, you don't get the, the Pythagoras, right? and you do not get this. You absolutely cannot get this using the light clock. So the light clock has to go. So the light clock doesn't work, and it'll have to go. But here's another thing, another reason why time doesn't go slower. This is a, a pocket watch, which has a spring inside it. And you wind up the spring, and that stores energy in the spring, which is released slowly, incrementally, and that's how it keeps time. So surely, if this thing here, if this was moving relative to me, is the energy going to be released from the spring at a different rate for the, the person moving and another rate for the person who isn't moving? That's not going to happen, is it? This is not going to happen. So you don't get different times just because an object is moving.